everyone, it's Tim, and we're going to do the first of a series of probably 23 videos, I think it is, on tissue salts. And I'm going to break them down one by one. I'm going to show you the facial signs in as high a quality image as I can. I'm also going to show you what it looks like when an individual does not have that facial sign so that you really get to see the difference. But I'm going to talk about them. I'm going to talk about some of the health issues that are indicated by deficiencies. I'm going to talk about some behavioral issues. And I'm going to talk about some vanity issues because I know I have a lot of uh, people who are estheticians who follow me who want to know about this stuff. And it, for those of you who are more motivated by vanity than your own health, well, I'm, I'm going to I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk to you, your vanity instead instead of your health today. Uh, for those of you who are more worried about your health, well, we're going we're to get into the health as well. So calcium fluoride, one of the most, what's the best word to say, I guess it's controversial uh, substances or minerals in the human body. What people don't realize is that it is the second most abundantly stored micromineral in the human body. It is second only to iron. It's a, it's the only one, only micro mineral that store that we store more of, and that's iron, than calcium fluoride, or fluor, fluoride, fluorite, however you want to call it. And there's a reason for that. Well, in our community, we talk about dental glaze and bones. There's the cal, fluoride is uh, responsible for far more than that, and what's in our water or our drinking system is sodium hexafluorosilicate. It's not calcium fluoride. It's not even truly fluoride. Fluoride is a, is a, is one fourth of what's actually being dumped into our waters, and it's being anyway that's being exaggerated, or talked about in a one-dimensional manner at least. Uh, there is dangers to to excessive fluoride and toxicity. The issue is toxicity and the wrong type. It's not that we do not need fluoride because we absolutely do, and while again we recognize dental glaze and bone requiring fluoride. The epidermis, your skin, also needs it. Tendons, ligaments, all connective tissue in the human body. Uh, your joints, so your cartilage will need it as well. So the main uses for calcium fluoride uh, would be your joints, uh, skin. When you There's a loss of elasticity of skin and tendons. Uh, and believe it or not, varicose veins are formed, uh, the direct link, for varicose veins is to calcium fluoride, uh, a deficiency of calcium fluoride. And whenever you see somebody with calcium fluoride, you're going to see this line right here. I hope you can all see this and that my cursor is working, that it's highlighting as I do it. This is called a cubicle fold. And this is the greatest indicator of a calcium fluoride deficiency. When that is present, calcium fluoride, there is a calcium fluoride deficiency. Let's just go on to the next photo here. And once again, we're seeing it. It starts at the inside corner of its of the eye, and it works its way down and outward. This this lady is not as it's not as severe as the last. But let's have a look now at somebody without it. Now you see somebody. There's no folds here whatsoever. There's nothing. No calcium fluoride deficiencies here. Calcium to flu fluoride deficiency here. And calcium fluoride deficiency is definitely here, and it's more pronounced and profound than in the other lady. So we see and we know that this lady has a calcium fluoride deficiency. So what else is going to occur in calcium fluoride deficiencies? And you're starting to see it here in the development. I'm going to talk about vanity for, first off. You're starting to see the, the development of crow's feet. Number one link. Uh, vanity issue when it comes to um, a calcium fluoride deficiency. But there's also acne. Uh, premature balding, uh, chronic chapped lips, dull hair, sagging skin or sagging breasts, because you're, you've lost elasticity and they can't maintain and stay up there. Uh, and lastly, nipple tearing. Uh, sounds a bit odd and maybe even a little kinky. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help myself. Um, but you get dry, cracked nipples that are they can even bleed for some women. That's most often caused by a calcium fluoride deficiency. Now let's talk about behaviors. 
uh, and we'll get to the health issues last. When it comes to behaviors, somebody with the cubicle fold, pronounced cubicle fold, would typically be an aggressive person. And this isn't always. These are indicators. So I'm going to list a, a, there's probably seven or eight of them. Uh, they could have one or, or none of them. It all depends upon the individual and the severity of the deficiency uh, and the individual themselves. So they can be aggressive, overly dramatic, suffer from, dr dr can't speak, depression, immaturity, lack staying power, a.k.a. that five-minute man or two-minute man, whatever you want to call them, and a lack of will. Uh, lack of drive or desire. Those are the behavioral indicators of a calcium fluoride deficiency. And any of these, don't they don't have to all be present. Anytime you see, and I'm going to start talking about health. In total, there's probably 150, 200 different ind possible indicators uh, that would correspond with a calcium fluoride deficiency. I'm going to talk about 30 roughly, maybe. Um, there, so, so that means there's about 120 more. Uh, just going to hit on some of the other spots. You guys can research calcium fluoride deficiencies and their signs. Uh, there's a website that's schusler-cell-salts.com. You can go on there. It's not site's not accurate, but it'll help give you some ideas anyway. Uh, I know that was a website that was converted from German to English, and the translations are very poor in many cases. Some of it I don't agree with. That's a very small part of it, so, and I, but I do think that a lot is missing. But anyway, that, that will help you kind of get through and see what's kind of going, going, going on. I'll give you some ideas if you're thinking about the idea that you may have a calcium fluoride deficiency yourself. You can look at the rest of the possible indications. If you can link up uh, five to ten of them, this is a pretty good, uh, that would be a pretty good indicator that you are indeed suffering. So now, what, el what health issues can occur from a calcium fluoride deficiency? Well, we have cataracts. We have a hardening of the arteries. We also have our arterial sclerosis, which is the buildup or plaque buildup within the arteries. We have PMS. We have all cysts. Calcium fluoride and silica are the two cyst eaters. They will eat cysts in the, in the human body as well as polyps. Uh, high cholesterol tendonitis, recurring ligament tears, and because of that, and also, um, what do you call it, uh, dislocation, dislocating your joints often. Think about Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. You've got uh, recurring ligament tears. You have tendonitis or a stretching of the tendons that, where they do not come back into shape. You've got dislocation. Isn't that Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome? I really want to get my hands on somebody who will try out a formula for Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. So, but anyway, spinal disc prolapse, which you may know as herniated discs or ruptured discs or slipped discs, they all they have all different names, uh, but the proper name is a prolapsed spinal disc. Uh, sex hormone imbalances, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, uh, all all require all require calcium fluoride. Why? Because the outer layer of the sex organs are connective tissue. If that connective tissue has hardened because there's a lack of calcium fluoride and it's no longer elastic, then it can, you have to realize that they kind of squeeze they gent to gently pump out the hormones. When they can't do that because of a lack of calcium fluoride, there becomes hormonal imbalances. Uh, goiters uh, in people with thyroid disorders uh, such as Graves disease, uh, a goiter is also linked to calcium fluoride deficiency, all her hernias, every single one of them. It doesn't matter. A hernia occurs when there's chronic inflammation and the skin cannot come back into shape. Again, so when the skin cannot come back into shape, it's calcium fluoride or it's silica. Uh, miscarriages, once again, uh, you, as you can imagine, the connective tissue cannot stretch or expand. Uh, thus, uh, miscarriages can occur. What am I missing here? I'm missing a lot, actually. But I'm just gonna, I'm going to stay with that for now. So, there's about 120 different deficiencies. 
I'll try to include a link for you guys all to go and see the complete list of deficiencies on the that's schusler cell salts dot com website, whatever it is. I'll try to include it in the description of this video. You can use that to kind of as a general guide. Again, I don't agree with all of it. I think there are many things missing. I don't agree with the listed facial signs that are indicated for the most part on there. And I've tested this over the course of the last quarter century using kinesiology-based muscle testing, uh, identifying the real needs when, you, when it comes to finding, taking health issues like we, as we just listed, testing them for the individual salts or all the salts. So, because you, when you think of something like spinal disc prolapse, there's a good one. Spinal disc prolapse uh, has more than just one possible indicating uh, deficiency. So it could be calcium fluoride, it could be silica, it could be manganese is actually another one, I believe. Uh, so there's, there's a lot of them that could be. So when you take somebody and you test them and then you compare the facial signs as is listed uh, by the gentleman who, are de who made the facial signs list, it's not completely accurate. Uh, th this case, calcium fluoride is obvious. Um, that's it actually, and even in her, you can see the chap lips, uh, which you, you would expect to see. You're starting to see skin hanging above the upper eyelids. Um, so let's just go through the pictures one last time. So here we're seeing the calcium, uh, sorry, the cubicle fold, which is a calcium fluoride line. Goes out to about here. We'll go on to the next picture, and here we're seeing it start at the inside corner again, work its way down to about here. Starts there, works its way down to here. Then we take a person who has none. She has an indent here that's actually, this indent is actually uh, selenium, and we'll talk about that in another video, but there's no calcium fluoride or cubicle fold going on there. So no calcium fluoride deficiency for this lady. Definitely one for this lady. Definitely one for this lady. That's calcium fluoride, folks. That's what you need to know. I'll put a link in the description specifically to calcium fluoride to, to direct you right there, and you can have a look. Remember, it's not 100% accurate. I'm not advocating that that's the best source of information because it's not. Uh, it's even poorly translated. But anyway, I, I, you, you use it for a, a general to give you a general idea. That's it for now. Bye-bye.